Hi YouTube. I'm, I'm going to go over a it's a it's a fix for a for a fault with a, an Eberspacher, um, and and it affects um, D4W and D5W hydronic heaters. And it starts off with a with you'll notice the pitch of the air motor just just moving around slightly, and um, if you're not really listening for it, you might not you might not really notice it, but. Um, it'll get worse, it'll get slowly get worse and it gets to a point where where the air motor will, will actually stop and typically it'll it'll be running fine and then suddenly you'll um, you'll hear the heater stop um, and you go to restart it and there'll be clouds of white smoke um, and what happens is the, the heater will be running and suddenly the air motor will just stop dead and the fuel pump will carry on ticking um, and then the flame will go out, and it'll do a it'll do a, a shutdown cycle. It'll log a, f a fault code, um, and then when you restart it, it, it burns off all, all the all the diesel which has been dumped in the in the exhaust and, and the burner. Um, so you'll you'll get the clouds of white smoke. Um, but but what what's actually happening is the the air motor loses its earth. So. Um, when the problem first starts, when it's when you hear the pitch of the air motor just moving around very slightly, um, you, there'll be a, there'll be a voltage drop between the earth at the at the air motor and the um, and the the earth down down in the um, control like the the junction box. So so what you have to do is you have to um, strip it down very slightly. Um, and you want to get at the cables for the air motor so you, you've got a black lead which is the um, it's like a variable positive supply for the air motor and then you've got the brown lead which, which is the is earth um, so you need to you need to like cut some of the insulation back and get a meter on that on the brown cable and then when the heater's running you, you measure the difference between um, between that point there on, on the earth and then and then down here at the at the junction box, and w when it first starts up, you, you naturally get some some voltage drop between between the earth here and the control and the junction box. So, and um, when the glow plug comes in, because the glow, the glow plug draws so much power, you you you'll see a bit of a voltage drop anyway. But then when it's st stable and when it's when it's running without the glow plug, um, you'll with this fault you'll see a voltage between probably about. 0.2 of a volt and, and a whole volt um, and the air motors it's a six volt air motor so so that that voltage drop causes that pitch difference um, and I'll run it up and you'll see when when you touch the when it, when you bypass the the, the drop you, you get the air motor speeding up slightly okay so I don't know if you can hear that but but you can hear the pitch altering slowing down when this big a voltage drop and you'll see up to probably about a volt in, in some cases. Don't know if that's clear. Um, so, so I've spliced um, into the earth uh, on the air motor on the brown cable with this black lead here, and I've also um, got a connection into the main into the main negative on the, on the wiring harness, uh, and you can see. Just listen when I touch. You hear it speeding up and going more steady. So that's me connecting and disconnecting it. Okay, and, and normally, I mean, on the earlier heaters, on the slightly earlier version, still, still the um, hydronic, but with the early glow plug, the, um, there was a main earth lead, there was like a main earth connection on the plug, 
Um, so you could go back to that, but on on these latest versions, the the kind of heaters it's, it's insulated return. So so if you earth it back to the body of the heater, but you know you'll be going through the hull of the boat. You won't actually be going through the heater. Um, so so it's best to to run the earth lead um, down down with the with the with the loom like where the loom comes out. Um, and either connect into the um, splice into the, the negative in the loom, or or it's probably easier just to go back to the um, the main connection, the main earth, and the the control box in the junction box. If the heater gets sent away to a to a dealer to a um, to an Eversvacker agent, they they don't. Well, as far as I know, the, the dealers around me they don't know about this problem, or they. They don't. Um, they don't deal with it like this. What they do is they'll they'll first look at the codes. They'll see an air motor fault code. So they'll they'll change the air motor, new gasket, maybe a new service kit, um, put it, run it back on the, um, run it up on their on their test bed, and then they'll realise the control unit's gone. Fit new control unit, and and it it's a mega job. You know, it's a huge bill. It is. It's a it's a it's a big job. It is. Um, and when you get to a stage where you've, you've, you've got to put control units on, it, on an old heater like this, you know, on a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old heater, I personally, my, my, my kind of, my, my advice is to, to, to think really hard about it because, because it, they're not a good heater anyway, you know, compared to the other heaters available, um, you know, you can end up just throwing money at them. And there's, um, you know, much better to fit a, a new Wabasto or, um, or, or look at the other options. So, and also the reason I, I, I kind of don't like getting involved in them is that they can be a bit of a nightmare. And often, you know, if, if you do a control unit, you know, you can find six months later an air motor will go or the burner will go. There's no real way to service the burner. It's not officially, there's no... They're not serviceable because you, you can't get inside them. You can't. It's all enclosed. It is. I mean, there's a few different techniques for removing the carbon, but but you never know where you are with it. You, you know, you can't you can't actually get inside like you can with the other heaters, um, like you can with the Wabasto or, or in Bakuni even. So um, so I don't really like getting involved with it, with them anymore. Um, and this video is more to promote. To promote the other stuff that I do, you know, the other work that I do in narrowboats. Okay, so I hope, I hope that makes sense. Um, if, if there's any questions about it, or you check check out my other videos and um, check out my website, uh, it kind of gives you a bit more detail on, on what on the kind of jobs that I do get involved in. Um, okay, thanks for watching.